Welcome back to the Discovery Doc Podcast. I'm here with your host, Dr. Cece, functional medicine nurse practitioner, self-proclaimed toxin tamer, and crunchy mama. And this chick over here. I'm Anna Kate, your medical mystery overachiever and discovery liaison. And we are back with Savannah, and she's got a special guest on screen with her again, that she just made a human being, y'all. <laughs> like, this is incredible. I mean, in the, in the span of the last episode, and now she's a dog chunk of monk. I love those cheeks. <laughs> I love it. So if you're not watching or just listening to us on podcast, go over to YouTube and check out this beautiful oh my piece gosh, of right just here. A ham. Literally a ham. So if you guys missed it, be sure to check out our previous episode. We've been talking to Savannah about all things just health and wellness and fitness related in terms of prenatal and pregnancy and postpartum. Savannah is is a women's personal trainer who specializes in pre and postnatal um optimization did i just make up a word <laughs> that's a word that's optimization, a word. Is, optimization a word. is a word it's it's a thing and she does so by empowering women to just sustain you know what's manageable for them in in whatever stage of life that they are in so we're super excited to have you back to continue our conversation Me with, too. i kind of want to go from here is just women's health in general with a huge aspect is sustaining a health journey or a fitness journey. And I know so many women, I'm guilty of this myself, where you start up again after a lull, and then you get overworked and overtired. And so you just quit and stop. So talk to us about whether you are a CEO or a busy mom with all these kids, or you travel a lot or whatever it is in your life. What are your recommendations for sustaining a fitness journey? I love that. Yeah, I think the number one, um, because, well, here, when I send a questionnaire to new clients and, you know, they fill out all this information about them, two of the most important questions I think that I ask, it's not their goals, because most likely their goals are lose 10 to 15 pounds, you know, tone, like, it's it's the same answer every time. But um, I also ask, like, what is the biggest thing holding you back? Like, what are the struggles you face? Like, why have you not gotten to this goal? Um, or have you before? And what, you know, how did you get back to where you are now? So these are all really important questions, I think, because maybe they have achieved the goal, maybe they've achieved their, you know, fitness goal, like 10 times, but for some reason, they fall off, right? Something in their life keeps them from maintaining that. And that's when I like to dive a little bit deeper, because I see this over and over again, um, fall off the wagon. I think it's like the most common term I hear. And I always just, you know, internally, not to their face, but I'll roll my eyes a little bit because I'm like, oh, you know, that's the common, it's what always happens to people. I totally get it, especially if you are a CEO, a mom, like literally yesterday, all I wanted to do was a leg day. Like that's all I wanted and it did not happen. And I could have, you know, maybe taken the kids in with me because we're so fortunate to have a home gym, but it just, it didn't work out. There were other, you know, obligations that took over, but guess what? I'm going to try really hard to do it today. I actually woke up really early this morning so I could get in a two mile run. Like I just, that's all, that was my goal for today. Just get the run in. If it means I have to get up earlier than the babies. I'm going to get up earlier than the babies, even though he woke up multiple times last night and I was exhausted. I still did it because I made that commitment to myself. So I think it comes down to getting real with yourself, getting clear about your expectations of yourself and being realistic with like, okay, what can I even fit in? Another thing I really like to do, especially with my like online clients, if I'm doing like coaching clients online, because I'm not seeing them in person, you know, we're like, I know their schedule. I know they're going to come see me Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if it's an in-person client online, I'm, I'm asking them, what's your schedule? Like what is like, tell me, tell me your day in the life from what time do you wake up? What time do you eat breakfast? What time do you, you know, have to nurse your kid, whatever it is, what time do you go to work? Because then we can kind of find those little pockets, right? Those little pockets of time where maybe you're like, oh, what do I even do from 11 to 1130? Oh, I scroll, you know, I'm, I'm doomsday scrolling on the internet or, you know, whatever it is, or I'm, I'm sitting on the toilet for just like a little too long on my phone, texting, you know, people back, like whatever it is, like you can find those little pockets. I can too. I'm guilty of it all the time too, with, you know, other uh, or priorities of mine that I kind of, you know, push to the side, but there is a way. So whatever that is, we kind of like try to investigate that together. If it's 10 minutes, I'm serious. That still counts. People kind of roll their eyes at that. They're like, that's not going to do anything. Yes, it 
is, especially if it's like, you know, spaced out throughout the day, 10 minutes when you wake up, well, yeah, baby's crying. Okay, fine. Go nurse the baby. Then you got to, you know, make your toddler breakfast. Like, you know, I literally lived through this this morning, but okay. What happens when you put the kids down for a nap? Well, I have all this work to do. Okay. Before you start diving on your work, if you do 10 minutes of another, you know, whatever it is, walk around the block if someone else is home or, you know, 10 minutes of a yoga session, whatever it is, that's going to get your brain like more stimulated too, so that you're more productive in your work. So to mm-hmm. me, it's a no brainer, like make that a priority in your day, even if it's carved out throughout the day. Another thing I think is really important is finding a way to make it sustainable, right? And that is so hard for people because we just love a good 30 day challenge challenge like right we love like oh oh I'm gonna get you know I'm gonna lose 20 pounds in 30 days that's what they promised me I'm gonna get a big butt in in two months you're not you're not I wish I could get a big butt in two months but it's not possible so you know truly people hate to hear the unsexy answer of it's gonna take years of dedication to look like your favorite you know fitness influencer like it really is if it's an 18 year old influencer that that would you say it took it took that your favorite influencer if you want to build their shoulders or their abs yeah. or their legs. It yeah. took them years to get there. So it's gonna take you the same. Right. And you have to have that discipline That's on exactly on both sides. But it's hard because people are just seeing the end result. Like right, they yeah. didn't see the 10 years previously that went into that. So then they see this present result and they're like, ooh, I want that. And our society is so accustomed instantaneous to instant gratification. Yep that then they think, oh, a month of hard work and I will see all these insane immaculate results. And it's just not real life. And it's not motivating to them. And that's the other thing I hear is like, oh, I lost motivation. Okay. But I'm sorry. It's not going to stay. You have to find another way to stay, you know, disciplined. Motivation is going to come and go. And I feel, oh, oh. <laughs> did you hear me? Do you hear the baby? Yeah. Um, yeah. They're kind of wholesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but you know, I, I think you can always find a way to stay motivated if you want. Like I'm always thinking about my health. To me, that's my biggest thing. And I'm always thinking about like the future and being like a fit grandma. Like that's all I want, right? To like be able to run 5Ks with my grandchildren. So, you know, I can easily find ways to stay motivated, but it's also my my passion. So I totally have sympathy or empathy, whatever the word is, you know, right now I'm postpartum and my brain doesn't work, but I have both really for, for the people that they don't like to work out. They hate it. Right. Or they don't like to eat well. Like it's just, they don't, you know, they like mac and cheese all day. So I totally understand. And I actually, you know, was that way 15 years ago. It took a lot to get me to be where I am now. So I think finding other ways, whether that's like, okay, your spouse or your best friend, like they're going to help hold you accountable. I find so much success with people that work out with a friend or a partner, right? Even if they're not doing the same thing, but they both have to show up at the same time, which we just kind of talked about, like with y'all's podcast, I really think making that, that point to like have someone else hold you accountable. And it's not, to me, it's not effective if someone's texting me, like, did you work out today? Like, that's not it. I like, I I don't want to waste someone's time. Right. And if they carved out that hour and they set up the babysitter so that they can meet me at the gym, like, okay, that's important. And I I respect that. Your point is, so this happened to me because I totally, I'm going to use the term because it happened. I totally fell off the bandwagon right before I got pregnant with this one. And it's just like, I own my own business and I run the discovery doc and I have three kids at home. And to me, it's weird because fitness has always been a huge part of my life. I mean, I was an athlete and then up until this year, it's like, it really took a back burner and I was okay with it. Whereas I've never been okay with it. I'm like, that's weird. Like my desire for it has changed now. But when I got pregnant, I was like, okay, the first trimester was just, uh, you know, wash because I was not doing anything. But I know my body and how my body feels much better when I am moving. And so one of my best friends, she is a personal trainer. Also, she's amazing. I trust her with my life. And I was like, listen, I am not going to do anything unless you tell me to do it. Like, I'm going to be very honest. If you, if you spent the time, because I value your friendship and you as a human, if you spend the time to write me a plan that I can do that can help me just sustain a little amount of physical activity, whatever that is in your expertise, I will follow through with it. And that's the only thing that got me back was because, and she's not here. She lives in Florida. We live in Georgia. And 
but she spent her hours putting together a plan for me that I was like, now I need to, I need to respect that. And that's the only reason I've been able to keep up with it. So I totally agree that sometimes you just need that little extra responsibility factor coming from somebody else to yeah. maintain. And, you know, I don't know, it's a little different with friends and stuff. Like, I don't know if you paid your friend to write that or if she just wrote it, you know, wrote it for you. Wrote it for me. Bless her. I love her. She's so sweet. That's, I know. That's- we, we do tradesies though. I help her. I see her son as a patient. So oh, okay. so, so, yeah. I was gonna, I was going to say, you know, for you, you're such a good human that you do care just about her time and effort that it took to write that. But I do think a lot of people, they do need that they need to spend a dollar to like really commit. And I have seen that time and time again. I, my husband has probably watched it happen, you know, 10, at least 10 times now over the years where, you know, even if it is like kind of a friend, you know, like someone that like I've known and they just really can't afford me, but they really need my help. And I'm like, you know, Hey, don't worry about it. Just if you can pay anything cool, but if you can't totally fine. So maybe they'll pay like 50 bucks just, you know, cause that's all they can. I'm doing charity work. I, I love it. I, you know, I'm happy to help, but they don't do it because they didn't pay enough. And then they end up, oh my gosh, this has happened multiple times. They end up being like, Hey, you know, I, I found this online coach. I think I'm going to end up, you know, using now because I just can't stick to your plan. And I'm going to spend a thousand dollars for this online coach. So they look good. And I'm like, that is a slap in the face. First of all, second of all, it takes you to spend a thousand dollars to like you know, versus a free plan, but it's true. It's true. And I'm the same way with other things, right? I'm the exact same way. I really need to spend money on certain things I don't want to do to be consistent. So I totally get it. And I feel, I feel for people when they just really don't want to show up. So that's why I say, find the friend that can keep you accountable, pay good money, you know, don't be scammed. I feel like there's a lot of scammers too, like people that literally charge thousand dollars for coaching for a month fitness program and and coaching but I'm like you know good for them that's awesome like that's what their time is worth and hopefully they're really good and worth it but I don't think you need to spend that much a month personally (laughs) it'd be great if everyone paid me a thousand dollars but you know it's unnecessary um yeah so basically that's my answer is you gotta find deeper motivation you can like it's something to work towards like long term not just like lose you know 10 pounds you also need to find the discipline muscle that we all have living inside us that my mom and I were just talking about this my discipline muscle is lacking for cleanliness in the house I hate picking up I hate deep cleaning I hate it I hate it hate it hate it but I need a clean house right to to survive and have it like a clear mental state because you know you look around at the mess and you're like oh my gosh I'm going insane so (laughs) we were talking about that where other people lack the discipline muscle for working out So that's the other thing. Um, Last thing I'm going to say is really finding something that you love, which, you know, all day, I'm going to say that I love strength training the most. I think everyone, you know, if they have a physique goal, even if they're scared that they're going to get bulky, you know, they're most likely not unless they're eating like an a-hole. So, you know, they, they will benefit from strength training and they're scared, but I'm like, seriously, do it, do it, do it, do it. And then I'm always like, you you always, you know, say that I look nice, but yeah, and I strength train and I lift heavy. So like, why do you think you're going to end up looking like the Hulk, but I don't like that doesn't make sense. So I'm a preacher, you know, in strength training. I love, I love the idea of walking because it's low intensity exercise. You know, it's really good for the nervous system, but you know, if you really don't like weightlifting, cool. You know, if you just really love bar or whatever it is, cool. Do it. I love bar too. Honestly, I love it all. I love to, I don't have enough time in the day. (laughs) okay since you love it all are you still doing cycling because I can't listen to new songs without figuring out is this a climb song is this a ride song is how can what's my my, what's my bpm so I have a background of I I call myself a psychotherapist so before COVID hit like CYCO psychotherapist because I I got that one killing them at it so right before um the world shut down in 2020 I was personal training and doing group fitness and coaching. And I was doing no lie. I don't know how, I don't know how I'm still alive because I did 20 classes a week and I'm riding 20 miles in a class. Wait, wait, wait. You did not do 20 classes in a week. That is wild. And I was 
out and I was exhausted and my body wasn't responding like it needed to with all the stuff that was going on yeah. with the Lyme and the lupus and all the all the fun stuff. So in 2020, when the world <laughs> shut down, I slept for a year. Like I lived in my parents and just slept for a year because our house was under construction and mold and kind of all that. But I total burnout, total cortisol. But I can't listen to music now without building us building it into a playlist. I, trust me, I, I feel the same way. And it, look, I have um, my Peloton bike right here next to me. <laughs> so no, I definitely, I love to spin, but I, I don't, uh oh, hang on. oh, he wants to be on the camera. <laughs> I love to spin, but I don't have a lot of time. It's not something that I can do with like my kids around because they're not, they're going to tear this room apart. So I don't, I was just telling my husband today, I wish I got time to do it more, but I just don't. So to me, walking is the most tangible as a mom, right? Like you, as long as your kid is cool in a stroller, which I train mine to be cool in a stroller, the second they're born, we're getting them used to the stroller, right? Like what's not to like, you get to look up at the trees, like the fresh air, but you know, some kids scream and I get that. And I've heard that, that reason before, because it is a reason. If your kid is absolutely going to be miserable in the stroller, that's not a mental health walk for you. You know, that's, that's stressful. (laughs) <laughs> so but I, I always say to try you know and especially if you can the second you have your kid like I said get them out there get them used to it give them a snack you know when they're old enough like make them happy so that that's your hour I make it an hour and I like to just listen to a podcast and zen out you know or listen to the birds if it's a nice day um to me that is the most tangible right for a mom and then if you can still squeeze in something else with your kids around do it I try really hard too I just posted a reel about that like working out as a family it doesn't happen all the time because it's not ideal, right? It's not like Scarlet pooped in the middle of the workout. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, she poops a lot. Um, he's usually pretty chill, but when Scarlet was a baby, she was not chill. Probably because she got sucked up from a vacuum. So um, she came into the world, you know, just a little traumatized and she was a very unhappy baby. So I would try to like work out in our home gym with her and the little bouncer, absolutely not. Like it had to be a baby weighted workout or nothing. So, you know, every kid's different, but I would just say as far as like mom hacks, definitely try to baby weighted workout, put them in the carrier or or hold them. Try to see if they'll just lay and do some tummy time, you know, while you do a quick, your own tummy time, right? For 10 minutes, just bang out some push-ups and some core work, like do what you can. I think people sleep on the fact that just five to 10 minutes can make a difference. Like I think so many women are like, well, what's it going to do? It's not going to do anything. And it's like, if you just switch your mentality to be like, well, that five minutes is five minutes more than you not doing those five minutes. That really can add up. Well, you know, what's, what is that? I just read it, read it again and I'm forgetting how many hours it is or something. Hang on, hang on. I'm going to, I'm going to mess this up, but hopefully you guys know, and you can like bail me out of jail here. It's like, day is 4% of your week. Well, that, to it's the exact same like concept something about like um 18 minutes a day or like yeah something like that where it's not a lot but if you do it every day you you know like become an expert at it right so I totally totally agree with that and like you know in the last episode we talked all about pelvic floor and deep core that makes such a difference in as I said the way you <laughs> bless you the way your physique looks right? Like you literally will carry yourself better. You're, you will look skinnier if that is your goal. And even if it's not, you just will, cause your deep core will be so strong. Right. So that takes literally no time at all. If you did five minutes a day of deep core and pelvic floor work, you'd probably have better sex life. You'd probably be able to run and jump and cough and sneeze, you know, without and laugh without peeing yourself right you might not have any low back pain anymore you know you would definitely just be stronger in your general life and that's five minutes a day so it doesn't have to be that hard absolutely so I've got a question now that we have a milk full baby and we know his preferred beverage of choice what is mama's preferred beverage of choice in her (laughs) her morning cup cheers this is my Stanley cup first of all which I am a is this inappropriate to say I'm a slut for Stanley? I'm sorry if it's inappropriate, but you can cut that out. Um, I'm a slut for Stanley cups. I do love them. I don't like the um, uh, knockoffs. What do you call them? Dupes. I don't like the dupes. I like the Stanley cup. It's just like, the best. It's like 50 bucks, but you know what? It's fine. I really need to start making commission off it because all of my in-person clients have them now. And we like, 
I'm joking, obviously. But if someone comes in and they bring in like their yeah. Hydro Flask, I'm like, um, what is that? that at the door? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really like, do you see the other cups here? Like, you're not cool <laughs> if you don't understand. Like, family, if you're looking for um ads ad spots, there's now two podcasts that you could be an ad. Spot right. For, so. Hey, Stanley, I love you. <laughs> so I'm always. I'm always drinking out of my Stanley cup and so I do as far as like coffee or something I freaking love coffee but um caffeine doesn't love me and I'm sure you guys are more knowledgeable on this than I am but I you know I've done some deep dives on like why I'm caffeine sensitive so I am currently very caffeine sensitive and I avoid it like the plague but I'll drink decaf so if I'm having coffee it has to be iced and it's decaf and (laughs) it's an organic blend and I'll do um do like two tablespoons of a creamer you know like a califia creamer or something but to be honest I really want to start making my own coffee creamer so I saved a recipe and I'll report back but it's like the pumpkin it's, it went kind of viral like the pumpkin spice creamer you know with like heavy cream and whatever pumpkin spice seasoning so I will report back how I like that I'm gonna try that soon and then collagen there has to be a two scoops of collagen I love that. Yeah, I like collagen in my brewed tea at home. What's in your cup today? Uh oh. Uh oh, she made a face. I want to know what's in her cup now. I have, I have a cold brew concentrate. So it's like an organic cold brew concentrate that you dilute with water and just ice. And then probably like two, maybe a tablespoon and a half of almond milk creamer. And that's it. Yeah. What's in your cup? I have an oat milk chai today like she's always fancy I'm like I poured something out of my fridge and then she comes and she's like I have an organic white peach tea with a splash of ginger that's over there that's in my that's in my other so my other thing I would love to I would love to be fancy like that do you guys like matcha sometimes it has to be sweetened I can't do it it's too bitter for me it has to be like naturally sweetened but yeah yeah if it's good I don't know what's in matcha. Once again, you guys probably know more than I do on this, but I brown nut green tea, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, but like what? Like what's the properties? I don't even know what the properties are in green tea. Like the vitamins and minerals. Antioxidants. Antioxidants. Yeah. When I'm pregnant, I crave matcha, like crave, because in a normal setting, I'm not really going out of my way, right? Yeah. When I'm pregnant, I need it like every day. So interesting. I don't know. It's weird. Do you have do you have any cravings this pregnancy? Sorry, side tangent. Um, not really. I mean, at the beginning, the first couple months, what cream cheese and pretzels? Okay, so well, she normally doesn't eat cream cheese, so that's I, a cream- I normally don't have dairy ever, and cream cheese, and I don't eat gluten, so gluten free pretzels, dipping them in oh. cream cheese has been my jam. What, than- a brand of gluten free. What? What brand of gluten free pretzels? Um, the flat ones, what are they? I have, we have them right over there. They're the flat ones and they come in a white bag with, with blue stripes. They're like the pretzel chips. Yeah. They're like pretzel chips. Uh, snack factory makes those, I think. Is it? Is it snack factory? And then there's another one that is grain free that I brought you last time that I yes. got from BJ's. Those are good too. Um, and those there's are a like, brand I, I can't think of the brand that I eat, but it is the best brand in the world. It's gluten free. So I will, you probably know of it, but I will send it to you. It what color is the bag? I can't I at the last time I bought them was for a road trip and it's been a while but they are they're like at Fresh Market and Whole Foods but I can't even think what the bag looks like I think it's white with like blue okay I think it might yeah, be and they're, and they're flat are they flat or round no there's like there, well there's different kinds there's sticks there's you know normal pretzel shape because uh, for the kids I just get like cauliflower ones they're not the same though they're not the same <laughs> They think they are, and we'll keep it right. secret. But they are not the same. That's that's what I was just telling my mother in law about Scarlett. I'm like, she thinks her, you know, simple milk pumpkin muffin is the sweetest thing in the world. <laughs> I don't know why she thinks that way. Yeah, yeah, she will think that hopefully forever. Now, a word from our sponsor. With a looming flu vid season upon us, prevention is key. Supporting your immune and gut health every day is crucial. That's why I trust Stellar Biotics for daily immune and gut health support. With 20 years of science behind their metabiotic and probiotics, Cellar Biotics produces all natural supplements that are proven safe and effective for everyone in your family, children, nursing mothers, and even pets. I trust them for my family's immune and gut health support, and I hope you consider them for yours. 
Learn more at StellarBiotics.com and use coupon code DrCC10 to get 10% off your purchase today. Um, okay, so getting back on track from our cup. We got to know what's in the cup. We, got, we have to know. I like to know. You can't yuck someone's yum. Mm-hmm, of can. Whatever's in their cup, they get their cup. So let's <laughs> say that you have a, a client, a woman who is neither postpartum or prenatal, like just maybe has kids, maybe doesn't. What are some of your biggest tips for sustaining their health goals and or achieving their health goals? So let's say their health goals are fat loss and muscle gain. Like what is your system that you generalize? Because otherwise they need to become a client of yours, obviously. But (laughs) generalize, what's kind of your, your train of thought as to when that woman approaches you, like where your brain is going? So I feel like you're going to really appreciate this answer. And I'm not just saying this, like, you know, to suck up to you or like to impress you. So my new thing is like in the last, I would say I've been doing this for maybe three years that I've been saying this, but now it's been more so like, this is literally the first thing I'm saying to people. I literally go, Hey, like, you know, they fill out the questionnaire. If there's anything on there, because I ask them like about symptoms, like, do you have digestive issues? Like I ask them like more intense of like health questions too I just like to get a full picture and I'll literally be like you know if they're saying they have like really painful periods and they you know have a lot of bloating and gas and indigestion or they have really bad anxiety or depression or whatever it is I will usually say you know I would really con- consider looking at like a f- a going to see a functional medicine mm-hmm. practitioner someone someone that knows more than I do that's that can actually like you know not saying that you can't achieve your goals without them um but I have just seen time and time again, you guys, like literally, I was just talking to my husband about this the other day. He's like, he's like, you have, you just have special case clients. And I'm like, no, all of these women, I swear have deeper issues. And that's why I'm like as passionate as I am about like functional health, because there, I have seen so many times where someone will like lose no weight. Oh, hang on. Hi. They'll lose literally no weight. And it's been like a year of them. And, you know, and and my husband will say, well, they're lying to you about what they eat. No, they're not. And I don't put them on like, I'm not giving them 1200 calories, you know, like that is absolutely heinous. So I'm trying to give them like an appropriate amount based on, you know, their activity level and where they find like a, a true maintenance. It's usually no less than like 1700 calories. Okay, it just depends, you know, it's totally specific to the person, but like I know that they're eating healthily, I know that everything else in their life is really top notch, and they're training, you know, four or five days a week. They are not losing weight and they have all these other symptoms going on. I like beg them to go see someone, and I have, you know, referrals to people in, in our area that I always send them to, but that's usually when they start to see results. So to me, that is now like truly my first course of action. If everything they're kind of saying in the questionnaire lines up with like, there might be something else going on that, you know, is affecting their health. Do you guys see that? Like when you're in your practice, you see? I mean, health is so multifaceted. It's puzzle pieces. And yeah. yes, I can have patients, I have patients who come to me who have that same story who are like, listen, I was a pro athlete and my body is used to training X amount of hours per week. I haven't changed how I've eaten and I gained 15 pounds and I cannot lose it. My body shape is changing mm-hmm. and it's because hormones are off. It's because thyroid function is off. It's because there's other kind of underlying infections that are going on that alter our cortisol. And if our cortisol is too high, then, Hey, we're going to gain weight and retain right. pressure. And there's, it's so multifaceted that you can be doing everything right in daily life and not seeing results because of some deeper health issue going on hundred percent. So okay. over and under or over training and under eating does not solve. The no. problem. It does not. That math does never adds up yeah. ever. Exactly. I like, I like, that was a good way of summarizing it. It's absolutely true. And it frustrates me to no end when my client will hire me and I'll be explaining that to them. Like, you know, Oh, you know, I actually think you're doing too much. You know, we need to cut back or I think you're under eating. We need to be eating more. They do not want, like they want nothing to do with that. And it makes me sad, but then I'm also like, you have to trust me to some degree. If you're going to hire me, you have to trust me. I'm not, I literally will say that. I go, I'm not trying to make you fat. Do you, do you think I'm trying to sabotage your goals? You know, like, why do you, I'm not suggesting this like for no reason. So mm-hmm. it's really hard to get people to cut back on training and to eat more or to eat, you know, more of the right things. Like if they really love like diet food, like there's a lot of people, right. That just love, 
<laughs> baby so loud. But this love, you know, like eating the protein bars all day and you know, like the sugar-free stuff. And I'm like, please, like eat, eat something else, eat something real. <laughs> yeah, this is a really good point. I think because again, society was convenience, but society also has created like a million and two fads when it comes to diet. So yeah. for your clients, how do you navigate someone who has been kind of trained to want to do those fads? Or like you mentioned earlier, like the 30 day fast or whole 30 or whatever, where it's like an intense 30 days, but it's not real life because you can't sustain it. Like, what are your tips for those clients to maintain a good nutritional plan yeah. with all the fads and the craziness around it? Well, usually if someone comes to me and they say like, they're just telling me they're not asking, they'll be like, you know, I, I decided I'm going to start doing keto. I found that like, it's met with resistance for like on their end. If I immediately start bashing keto because you know, it does, you know, it can work for some people. And for me to like go in with that attitude, it's a psychology thing. So like, I try really hard now not to just be like, you know, it's really stupid. And like, you're not gonna, you're gonna gain it all back. Like, I could say all that or I could say it's bad for your health. Like, but I've been really trying the last few years to not do that. And then I find <laughs> I'll usually like just make some mild suggestions. I might even just be like, Oh, that's awesome. Like, I'm so proud of you. Like, how have you been feeling on it? You know, good for you for, you know, committing to something. And then I might just text them like, later and be like hey you know like he was just thinking you know just you know pay attention for these like health markers like if you know whatever it is like you can't sleep anymore or you know anyway there's a lot of things that could be going wrong right if they're like in a really restrictive diet um but I'll be like just pay attention for those you know it could be a good indicator we need to like eat more food or eat more uh protein and carbs and, and then I'll be like you know and let me know if you need any help at all I'm always here because you know I, I really believe in like the way that I do things and eventually usually they won't see results and they'll end up coming to me anyway so my biggest thing I always talk about is um and it's so trendy so I feel like you know I feel like I'm just copying everyone's trend but it's really true and I've been saying this much longer is protein right I love that it's trendy because I think it's really beneficial it's unlike the other trends so it actually this is really really good um so I'm happy it's a trend so I'm always trying to get people to eat at least 0.7 gram 0.75 grams per pound of their ideal body weight so if they weigh 200 pounds and they want to weigh 150 they want to aim for 150 grams a day um and a lot of people that I train also have had like a funky relationship with food in the past so it's it's always kind of they're scared like to track anything yes and I feel bad because I'm like, I get it. And I'm not trying to make, you know, be, be triggered at all or have something come back up for you. So it's really hard to, to get them to, <laughs> he's trying to talk. It's really hard to get them to even like track their protein, but I just try to like get them to, <laughs> to change yeah. their mindset around it. Like you don't, I'm not asking you to track everything. I'm literally just asking you to figure out, weigh your food for like one week, you know, and figure out how much protein you're eating in a day like and that is a huge learning curve for people because like I know for me at, even as an athlete like I always ate in our house growing up we ate really well like I didn't even have I, I did not eat fast food ever growing up like my wow. mom cooked all our meals yes and I had Arby's like twice randomly like they're curly fries and that was it like my we just we didn't grow up like that my mom was very very health food conscious and works out like crazy so, it. so it's always been a part of my life but I would still eat kind of come college I would eat just like a college kid and whatever I wanted yeah. and even as an athlete in college like I look back now I'm like wow I could have been so much better even than I was if I just paid attention to the nutrients because I just wasn't eating enough and it wasn't until after college that the definition in my body started changing. The workouts didn't change, but the definition did because I was eating 140 grams of protein and mm -hmm. 90 grams of fats and still, you know, hundred grams or something of carbs. And we don't think about this. Carbs are so easy, so easy to get in the day, but protein, like we really, really don't understand how much 140 grams of protein is and how that can benefit our body. And so at the beginning, I would end up like at the end of the night, I'd be like, oh my God, babe, I have 40 grams of protein left. And I would sit with a, a like a huge bowl of egg whites. Yes. Like just to get it in. I ate so many egg whites. I've made myself allergic to egg whites. I believe it. But it's like, you have oh to, and you have to count your macros and do all that at the beginning. But then once you understand like proportions and what 
you know, ish kind of what you're getting in terms of grams, then you don't need to count that stuff anymore. But it's just a huge learning curve, I think, for a lot of people to understand really, if you're looking for those results, how much nutrients your body really yeah. needs. And weighing it and seeing what it is, you don't really know what like a, a serving of steak or serving of chicken or eggs or whatever it is. Like if you're not weighing it and you don't know how much you should be eating or on the transverse side mm -hmm. of overeating on the carbs or like, hey, did you know that a uh, cereal, a serving of just traditional like Cheerios is like a third of a cup? Like who eats a third of a cup? No one right. eat like a cup oh my gosh, or a cup a and a half. Or like a whole freaking bowl. Right. So there's all, and that's it's a really good awareness. Point. Right. And then one of the things that when I was and everybody would come and they were like, I'm going to lose 30 pounds in 30 days. Okay. Do you want to do this with a surgeon or without a surgeon? I have openings this afternoon. Let's go cut off your leg. And they're like, well, no, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. And I said, well, it's going to take more than 30 days mm -hmm. for you to adjust your lifestyle and have your lifestyle. And it takes more than 30 days, but we're going to, like you say all the time, building those, getting those building blocks and, and building out the little pieces. But if you want to lose 30 pounds in 30 days, you want to do it with the surgeon or without, because we can make that happen. Surgeon is yeah. going to be a whole lot more expensive. I'm cheap. It's easy. I mean, I'm going to cut it off and send you home. And then you're, you're, you've lost 30 pounds instantly. And they're like, I'm no, I'm going to steal that. From you. Go for it. Go for <laughs> that it. is literally, that's so perfect. Because I like adding, truly, I think so much of it is, it's a, like I was saying, like a psychology, I don't, how do I, I'm trying to say it, psychological approach, like how I approach my clients, because they will I've found time and time again, like they'll kind of just take it a little personally or they'll be defensive about it because they've already taken probably, you know, weeks of like researching this, like they saw someone else do it, right? Someone got good results, but then they're like diving in deep. They're like, you know, already trying to figure out that they got to buy the keto strips, right? To know if they're actually in ketosis. Like, like they've done all this research without asking me, which is you know totally fine. But then when they bring it up to me and I'm like discard, discounting it immediately, they're like, wait, no, like I'm already a believer in it, you know? So I, I do think I like the, a little bit of a humor, in the approach first and foremost with something like that or you know if they come to me saying they want to lose the 30 pounds in 30 days and they're set on it and that's why they're hiring me and then you know just add some humor to it first before you 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 let them down uh oh hang on baby stuck on the microphone <laughs> it's, it's guaranteed you'll lose 30 days by doing what you want without the yes. help of a professional yeah. like there's a reason why we went and took all the classes and did all the things and have the experience mm -hmm. like I don't coach anymore but if someone were to come to me I'm like okay well you got to put your money where your mouth is because I'm not doing this for for my own self like I'm doing this to help you and if you're not going to do it then like we said before like I don't want to waste my time but I don't want you to waste your time and effort and get frustrated like you can do the things and follow the steps but this is, is style this is not a diet mm -hmm. this is Mm -hmm. the and the lifestyle that works is a lifestyle that you'll do. So if you want to be yeah. lazy on the couch and tired and frustrated and all those things, then that's the lifestyle that you're choosing. Cause there are things that have to happen on both sides. Right. And so I love that. It's so complicated because some people in that moment would be so motivated by it and be like, no, I want to be this, like, let's go give me a plan to sustain. And then mm -hmm. other people, it could take them a year past the point that you had that conversation. Yeah to be motivated enough to make that change and some people they feel like they are at the upfront and then they get kind of stuck in their old habits very very quickly because someone in their family hasn't changed or their spouse hasn't yeah. or their yeah. kids are asking for you know other foods that they were eating before and there's so many just different moving pieces I think it makes it really challenging in today's world mm -hmm. for certain humans to kind of start that and, and sustain it but do you ever kind of random side note do you ever incorporate like talking about just balance and sustainability? Do you ever incorporate like the importance of yourself? It's like something I stress to patients is that it's okay to be selfish. Like it, it's not truly being selfish if you are just trying to take care of yourself is how do you take care of other humans or yeah. or dogs or whoever if you are not taking care of yourself? Is that something that you talk about with your clients? Yeah, I love that for, for mamas, especially, I feel like they are just the worst at like, <laughs> putting everyone before them. It's really, it's so bad. And I, and I feel, I feel so much guilt when I do, like, literally anything. It's so stupid. <laughs> toxic trait right and I'm like I need to stop feeling guilty so I mean like I'm preaching to the choir when I say it to other people but I do I really I 
I was telling Alex when I was um, pregnant, even with my second, I just didn't have the time anymore or the energy, right? Like third trimester energy for like my usual cardio, like doing spin once or twice a week was really, that was such an endorphin boost for me. It really, so I started just feeling kind of like mentally off, not depressed, but just like, I didn't feel like myself and I didn't like it. And I was like, oh my God, I think it's because I haven't made that time that I used to make for spin. And I've been putting in like, or I've been putting, I've been giving a lot of excuses for why I'm not doing that. So then I did it. I did like a 30 or 20 minute little, you know, Peloton session. I felt so good. And then I got to be a better mom the rest of the day because I was in a good mood and then I was a better wife, right? And I was a better trainer. So I definitely, definitely love that, that message. And I do think that's really important. Even like, uh, hang on. It's okay. Baby boy. Like, you know, happy, happy people don't kill people. What do you mean she's happy? She's a, a fitness instructor. So her endorphins are really high and happy people just don't kill people. She didn't <laughs> do that. Brooke did not do it. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad y'all both got that reference. Thank you. Um, hang on, let me see if I can. Oh yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. No, we're, yeah, we're, we're totally, totally fine. fine. So He's for those of you that are listening, uh, thank you for getting his his what's good out of his cup. His fix of that boob juice. <laughs> He's gonna be milk drunk in a minute. He will be. He will be milk drunk. But um, basically, to finish to finish the original question of like you know what someone needs to do to see yeah. results is I definitely think. Sorry, you're gonna hear a lot of grunting. Totally fine. It sounds like he's lifting weights. <laughs> uh, you okay, buddy? You're okay. Um, I'll see if I can get him to calm down before I answer the question. Sorry, but I have to put it out. It's okay. Mom, life. You're totally fine, girl. If I can move the mic away from him. Okay. Yeah, we can't, we can't really hear it. Yeah, just, just do okay. it. Good. background yeah. noise is fun he's worth so, it so in addition <laughs> in addition to protein and getting enough right I think that's number one because I will tell my clients you're literally wasting your money and time coming to me for strength training if you're not going to eat enough eat enough food and eat enough protein but food too so because I do think some people they'll be like okay cool but I'm eating I'm hitting my protein goal I'm eating 120 grams a day but then you know they're eating 1100 calories 1100 calories. Oh my gosh. Like you're, are you hard? Are you alive? <laughs> like, what's going on? So that's important too. eating enough. Cause you want to gain muscle. It doesn't mean you have to like be in a bulk forever. You know, I've, I've never, I have never done like a bulk and a cut and you know, like I've never done that personally. Some clients definitely do that. And I've given it to clients who like have really aggressive goals, but I've just always personally just yeah. Push myself up with weights in the gym, right? Always working on progressive overload, and I'm always eating enough. I'm pretty, I'm pretty much always at maintenance, right? And I'm pretty much always pushing myself in the gym and eating enough protein. Yeah, and so, you want you want to make it eat enough to fuel your body to do what you're asking it to do, and you want it to respond in the way that you want it to respond. And if you're not eating enough, yeah. it's not gonna do it. That's exactly exactly right, and and it's scary once again because people you know are trained to think that they need to. Like you do not need to always be in a deficit. And these people, oh my gosh, like people are in a deficit their entire lives, their entire yeah. lives. Cause they think that they, they can't eat more and it's sickening to me. It makes me so sad. And then if I tell people, I don't track my calories, but like, I know about, you know, how much I'm eating just based off knowledge. I'm like, oh, I'm probably eating at least 2000 calories a day right? when I'm nursing way more. And the people are shocked. They're like, what? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm five one, you guys, I am five foot one. If I was six feet tall, which some of my clients had been like five eleven, and I found out there, oh my gosh, really? You're that tall. Wow, girl, you would be thinking I look like a shrimp. I would just stood next to a really tall person. Oh, on our trip. And I was like mystified by her. I'm like, what's it like seeing over everyone's heads? <laughs> hey, hair's a little bit freer up here. No, you're tall enough. Your feet touch the ground. That's what I tell everybody. If you stand up and your feet don't touch the ground, then you have a problem, but you're tall enough. So means you're a fairy. <laughs> but uh it's, but um yeah, I, I oh he burped. Now he's happy. Um yeah. I definitely feel like oh people people get shocked when I tell them how how much I eat. And I'm like, if you are five eleven and eating twelve hundred calories a day, like good luck getting to any of your goals. So that's the other piece, eating enough food and it takes, you know, knowledge to get there. Um 
unfortunately it, it is helpful if you track for like a week. So usually I can convince my clients to track for a week and that does mean weighing food. Um, and you have to learn how to do that too. Like some people literally don't even know how to weigh their food, which is like, that's good, you know, cause we really, we don't need to be weighing our food all the time, but just for that week, figuring it out, how to properly measure, properly weigh so we can get an idea, right. Of where you're at. Then from there, let's say you're, cause I like to take people's average calories. So we'll take their average calories for, you know, the week and usually it's like 1300 and I'm like, okay. Then I go through the whole spiel. I'm like, we got to try to eat more. Okay. And so we'll slowly just increase. And, um, some people call it like a reverse diet. I just kind of go, you know, I don't want people tracking a lot. So I try really hard to just make it more of like an intuitive thing. Like once we kind of figure out, you know, like what you eat in a day. Okay. So let's just add in, you know, two eggs to the, to the avocado toast, right? Like very simple tweet where I know how much that's going to be, but they don't have to think about it. Um, I think that seems to be the most healthy approach for them mentally. And some people can track and they're fine. I could totally track and be fine. Personally, it's just my personality. I'm a hot mess. So I like, I'm type B, you know, I don't, I don't get like obsessive with things. I'm more like, like I said, eating the spoonfuls of peanut butter when I'm not supposed to like in a bikini competition. Cause it's just, to me, it's not a big deal, but I totally, totally respect people that can't, can't track. And that's why I think there's other there's better ways to do it anyway because is tracking sustainable for the rest of your life no and what I found I love tracking but what I found was the more kids that I had I literally did not have time to like open my phone put in how many grams that was weigh it or to take a picture like there's awesome where you can take a photo of the barcode of that protein shake and I'm like even that is so easy but I found myself in a space in life where I couldn't even do that and I would try to like log in my brain, okay, I had this, this, and this for breakfast. I'll log it later. And then later would come and I'd forget how much and then I'd make it up. And I'm just like, that was where logging that to be an issue for me was just the more kids I had. Yeah. But it, you it gets, what your, plate, your plate's supposed to look like. But at that point, right. I'm it like, becomes second nature. Exactly. And you do like a rough math in your head and you're like, great. Like, that's awesome. I hit my protein goal for the day roughly, but you just, it's a learning curve for sure. That's, that's exactly right. I, I definitely think when it, when it starts to, um, when it starts to stress you out to track, then that's maybe a good time to stop. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess just the last little piece of that is, like I said, you know, if you're lifting, I would say at least three times a week, ideally, ideally, um, if it's three times a week, I would probably give you three total body days, or you could do like for enough volume, you could do like an upper day, a lower day, but they're like, you know, like you're really hammering those muscles, right? Because you're more focused and isolated. So um, an upper day, a lower day, and then a total body day. And that way you're hitting on the muscles at least two to three times a week. So if you're doing that and you're, you know, I love, I love a step goal. I do. I think like at least 7,000 steps a day can be really helpful for people. We want that, you know, non-exercise activity thermogenesis and um, which is very easy if you're a mother holy cow, or a personal trainer. Cause you know, you're shocked how much you're moving around like in a session. So that's always a bonus. Um, but if you're doing all that, you're eating well, all that stuff, and you're not losing weight. And I would really recommend seeing someone that can dive into like in-depth lab work, right. And kind of figure out there's something else going on. So Savannah has all of her programs that she offers, which we will link below. Um, so tell us again about, um, bit, but wait, bump, was it called bump brigade? What is it called? Bump Our club. Bump club. Bump club. I was gonna try and then I said no. Don't yeah. do that, CC. <laughs> so, so you can't if you were in that season of pre or post partum, definitely reach out to Savannah and, and get plugged to one of her on demand programs. Also, follow her on all the socials because she is so fun. So, if you've enjoyed watching us and listening us to us in the in these last two episodes. Uh, the party continues on social media, so don't miss out on us all there. But tell us about where um, our listeners can connect with you and about your programs. Um, so on Instagram, I'm strength with, oh, strength with Savannah, and there's no H at the end, so S-A-V-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A. and then same thing on TikTok. And then I'm also Bump Club official on Instagram for like the pre-postnatal stuff. And yeah, the Bump Club programs are all on demand like a peloton class so you'll follow along with me but you don't have to like i also write write it all out so like if you do it once with me and you need to do it again you don't have to follow along with me you can blast your music do whatever you want um and then it's pre 
Pre postnatal, I'm sorry, prenatal is going to be first, third, and first, second, and third trimesters. And then the postpartum one is six weeks long. And yes, yeah, just like deep floor and pelvic floor work. Amazing. Beautiful. I'm going to be getting it for myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm going to. I'm we'll so post, excited. We'll post the link down below so you can get involved with Savannah too and support this new mama and baby. And I'm still going to post my progress too while I'm going through it. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> you guys, women empowering women. Hey. 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 Well, thank you, Savannah, so much. And the little munchkin also for joining us. We've, I mean, I just love this conversation with you. It's been so fun. Thank so y'all yeah, stay tuned for our whatever Anna Kate's going to talk more intelligently than I am. Oh, there's all, there's all kinds of new things coming up. So make sure that you're listening, liking, and subscribing and doing all the fun things on all the socials, um, not only for us, but also for Savannah as well. Um, we appreciate the um, reviews and um, Savannah has a podcast too, which we'll link, we'll link below. Yes. So Thank hopefully you know. we'll be on Savannah's podcast. So we'll, Heck we'll, yeah, we'll, you will. Very right. soon. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Until next time, let's discover together. The content provided in this podcast provides general information and discussions on various topics related to health, wellness, and medical advancements. However, it is essential to understand that the content provided in this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The hosts, guests, and contributors are individuals sharing their personal experiences, opinions, and knowledge in their respective fields. While they strive to provide accurate, up-to-date information, medical knowledge is constantly evolving and the information presented in this podcast may not always reflect the most current research and medical guidelines. It is crucial to consult with a qualified healthcare professional or medical expert for specific medical concerns. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay seeking medical treatment based on the information presented in this podcast. The Discovery Doc Podcast encourages listeners to use their own judgment and discretion while implementing any suggestions, recommendations, or lifestyle changes discussed in this episode. Each individual's medical situation is unique and may work for one, may not be suitable or safe for another. The podcast hosts, guests, and contributors are not liable for any direct, indirect, consequential, or incidental damages or harm that may arise from listening or acting upon the information provided in this podcast. Listeners are responsible for their own health decisions and should exercise caution and seek professional guidance when necessary. By listening to this podcast, you acknowledge that you have read, understood, and agreed to this medical disclaimer. If you have any questions or concerns about this medical disclaimer, please consult a qualified healthcare professional.